In this video we'll be converting this tired old inkjet printer into this funky looking pen plotter. I managed to find two of these printers on the side of the road so I thought I'd make a pen plotter out of them. As you can see the whole thing has been designed in a Fusion 360. If you'd like to follow along you'll have to know how to pull these printers apart so check out this video on the top right hand corner. In this video we'll just be assembling the plotter and in the next videos we'll be looking at the software side of things but for now let's just assemble the plotter. Okay, so here is the must-have parts you need to get from the machine. Each machine will have a scanning uh, motor and a scanning rod. This is all in the top half. A, in the document handler, there is this um, step motor. You want to keep all the tension components from out of the scanning unit as well with the springs. Sensors, there's lots of sensors in this machine. Some have wires, some have just got plugs. I'm just using the ones with plugs because they're easier to work with. And this rod here is from the paper feeder assembly. You just have to cut all the rollers, rubber rollers off this rod to um, to be able to use it. And also all the screws. Keep all the screws you can because you're going to need all sorts of different sizes. And it's not much point throwing any of them away until we've finished the project. So the first thing we'll do is assemble the X assembly. Okay, start with the X axis. We need the two uh, 8mm rods. Uh, two sensors, the tension roller, tension spring, uh, the belt, the motor, the X shuttle, and the uh, X motor holder. So these rods come um, with the rubbers on them. You would have seen me cut them off earlier, and it's got a sort of a, a place here for a C clip, and it's not the greatest machining so you might have to just sand that down to make it a bit smoother because we want this shuttle to go back across it quite smoothly without any tension so it should slide quite nicely and when it gets down to there it might bite in and the motor will struggle to try and move the motor if you print these parts in white you'll have to mark this this is a sensor actuator you need to mark it with some black tape on it i've just used a black marker just so the sensor uh, detects the entry of the shuttle. So first things first is we want to put the uh, 8mm rollers into these holes on this end. Now uh, these holes, they're going to be very tight. So you might just want to put them in and then, I've done it a couple of times on this unit so it's quite free, but rest this side on the corner of the desk and sort of hammer it in. So it goes all the way in and then put the other one in at the same time. You can see this one's quite a bit tighter. Whether these go down, these cut marks go down this end or the other, it doesn't, doesn't really matter too much, but make sure they're both on the same side. There's holes in there as well, which can cause a bit of a burr. Then grab your shuttle and it, it's going to go into this keyway here for where the sensor goes in. So we put the shuttle on and it should move quite freely. You don't want too much slop in there because then the drawing is going to be a bit of a mess but it's, it's probably an accurate amount of freedom. Down here it gets a bit where you've got these um, Max, if it's a bit rough, but I might have seen this down a bit more. But for my machine at the moment, it seems pretty happy with it. Then the other end, same deal, just two holes, slide them in, and that's sort of the x axis semi assembled. Next thing we want to do is put our tensioner on. So we there'll be a spring inside the scanner unit with the tension pulley and that just screws in there like that there's two holes obviously to line it up there's lots of different screw sizes so where possible always use the long ones because there's not a lot of short ones and we actually need the short ones throughout the project okay so once that's all screwed in there's a little button there for the uh, spring to go on you can just slide it along the rail keep the tension. Sit down the other end. We've melt the motor. It can only really go one way. 
It's best to put the belt on at this stage so you just pull the tension on rather than trying to stretch it around later on. So we just hook our tension on, put our belt on, let's put one keeper screw in there and just screw the rest of our screws in. So once everything looks like it's in place we'll just tighten all these screws up. So that moves nice and freely. Um, there's going to be another, the Y bolts onto here so that'll be where this, this belt sort of attaches to so it looks like it's not doing anything at the moment but it will when we assemble the other part the other bit we want to put on is another sensor which goes in here so we've got this holder and that sensor just slides in like that just screw that down so this is the home sensor for the Y so when the Y carriage comes up this way it um, hits that sensor this is uh, what it looks like, it'll go to the right back and then go to there to find its homing position. And just underneath, there's the sensor, it goes in there. So it's the X home, so when that scrolls back, it breaks that sensor, so it knows where its home position is there. Uh, it's just sits in there because this will be um, screwed down onto a bit of wood. And that's that assembly sorted, so we'll move on to the Y. So for the Y similar to the X, we've got the motors, the end stops, and the rails. This is the rail from out of the scanner unit itself. It's just got a big long one on the top half. It's not screwed or anything. It's just got a little clip it's like holding it in at all in the machine. And just the uh, end stop, which holds the uh, tensioner on. So first thing we'll do is just assemble the tension assembly and sound here really, just screw this in similar to the X. Grab our rods and put them in. It doesn't really matter which end is which because it's always, it uh, doesn't run across those at all. And this is our shuttle and we want it this side. because it moves back and forth that way and uh, we need to make sure that's nice and smooth as well there's no tension on it and then for the other end slide it in and it's in place the tension of the belt and the motor keep this assembly together so we don't need to screw anything together for that part. Uh, the next bit is the motor goes on top with it downwards rather than the other one which has just got the gears facing up and the belt feeds through this um, this two section here but this Part needs to screw onto the X first, so this is the Y assembly pretty much complete. We can't do much more until we screw it onto the X. So to join these two together, I just need to um, pull these rods out slowly so I can feed the belt through. And of course all the screw holes will line up. And for this one, you want to make sure that this screw here is a is a short one, otherwise it'll lock onto the shaft. So once that's screwed in position, we want to uh, get this belt on. And it's just a case of lining up the teeth with the gaps in the plastic there. And we just twist the motor, we can see it's gliding quite roughly. Next, we want to put the, the motor on. So, similar deal to the other end, it's just a spring and a tensioner. Same deal with this end, just hook the belt onto the tensioner and then tighten up these screws.
it's just the same here for the Y shuttle. Uh, it's just got some cutouts here for the belt to go into. Okay, so the last part we want to assemble is the tool head. So here's the actual tool we're just going to have to pan up and down. Is that a great design? Probably not. Um, so what I've done is for this, is it's got a keyway on it. So you can design your own tools. So if you don't like this particular design, you can just slide it off and slide on another one. It's pretty easy just to slide tools on and off this, maybe even a laser, perhaps, I'm not sure this machine can be good enough for a laser, but, uh, so this is sort of design, this, I've gone through all sorts of different processes, well, I've gone through all sorts of different designs which had some sort of problem, this one seems to be the most reliable so far. So you need the, a, the motor out of the ADF, and all the, um, these 3D printed parts, these screws, everything, everything in here so far we've used from the printer. There's nothing not from the printer apart from the parts we've had to print. So um, to get started we want to get the gear onto the motor. So for this gear, the hole in the middle is slightly smaller than the gear itself. So we're going to get it on there. So what I do with this is I just get a heat gun, blast the heat gun on here for a few seconds maybe and then with the gear I put on top and just push it down and it cuts the grooves into the tooth because my printer is not going to be able to print something that fine and then it does, does a perfectly good job doing it this way. So we've got to screw the motor in and we screw it in with this, these types of screw. It's got a little captured washer on it to uh, thread into the motor properly. And when we put it on we want the um, plug going out that way. Then we pop on our drive gear. There's an intermediate gear. And then the gear which will drive onto the um, holder itself it's just a washer to hold it all up together so you can make sure that it moves freely and it's pretty good and that'll go in and at the top here we've got another homing sensor and it just you know, just breaks through the sensor when it when it's homing so we just need to put it onto the machine and the whole machine needs to be screwed down to a board. So we'll do that next. Okay, we've got our pen plug assembled but we can't use it obviously because it's not um, stuck down and it's not wired up. But in this episode we're just building the plotter and then in the next episode we'll look at um, doing the wiring and setting up GRPL and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this onto a bit of wood and I've got a bit of plywood that's hanging around from an old project. I wouldn't um, recommend plywood to do for this particular thing because plywood is, uh, tends to, to curve and it's not flat. You really want a nice flat solid bit of wood so the uh, pen doesn't have to sort of dig in to keep the, the markings coming out nice and smoothly on the paper. But for Getting us to the next step, we'll just set it up on this bit of board and then when we're sort of sorted, we'll get a proper piece. But for now, we'll just grab our pen plotter and we'll set it up just on the corner here. It's not going to print any further than that. You might want to just measure around the edges maybe to be exact. It doesn't really matter too much. It's just always going to plot in the same area down here. So um, put it whereabouts, kind of where you want it, and then with a felt tip pen, just mark where the locations are for the drill holes. I've just got a pencil, so it's fine. We'll just mark out our holes then. So all the holes were marked out, and just drill the holes with a, like a two and a half, three millimeter drill. 
because we'll use the screws from the printer to drill it into the wood. Okay, so it's all screwed in, everything moves as it should. Um, so we're, we're good to go to start wiring it up and hooking up to the Arduino and doing the GRBL sort of setup, but that'll be in the next um, video. So the title of this video is um, free pen plot, all right? And you're saying, well, clickbait, you had to pay for the PLA, but all these printers are made out of plastic. Um, high impact polystyrene and in theory you should be able to grind that down and turn it into filament to print these parts. So coming up videos I'm going to be trying to make a machine which will grind up all these printers that I've got. So if you check this channel here you'll see all these printers I'm pulling apart and I've got tons of plastic, well not tons but a lot of plastic here I can grind up and try and turn into filament and um, over the coming weeks I'm going to try and see if I can get that to work. But for now let's end this um, the step. Next video we'll do all the setup to get it actually working and then the following video and for that we'll actually start printing um, objects out with the pen plotter. If you don't miss out on the rest of the videos subscribe here. If you want to see a video about a cool cat door look here. <laughs>